ratings for the PIN power diode. The most important parameters that we will uh, see on the data sheets for the power diode will be obviously the maximum reverse voltage in the off state, BR max, the breakdown voltage more or less. The maximum current that it can uh, carry in the on state, I max. The voltage drop in the on state, V on. And we will also see that very important will be the dynamic power losses during turn on and turn off. These ratings are mainly defined by the following structure and design parameters. Doping of the ND, that is the doping of the low doped region. Double WD, that is the thickness of the low doped region. And tau, that is the lifetime of the carriers in the low doped region. The lifetime is the average time a carrier survives in its free state before recombining with a hole or returning to the stable um, steady state. From this uh, table we just see that we have three design parameters more or less and one, two, three, four, five uh, important readings that are voltage, current, V on, uh, losses, turn on and turn off losses. It's clear that will be a trade-off somewhere. We don't have enough design parameters to optimize each of them. If we had at least five design parameters, maybe we could. Oh, okay, there is also some other thing that is here is not indicated, that is the area of the diode, for example. We can always increase the uh, current flow, increasing the chip area, making a bigger diode. However, it will increase linearly, the cost will cost of the, the diode will, will increase almost linearly with the, the silicon area. From the breakdown voltage, we know that uh, in order to get a high reverse voltage capability, we need a low doping and a relatively thick uh, layer. For example, 10 to 14 uh, atoms per cube centimeter and thickness of about 50 microns to get around 1 kV of reverse voltage capability. But which is the presence of this ND layer that is very lowly doped and uh, very thick on the static and dynamic performances of the diet? Let's try to devise the IV characteristics of the PIN diode. We come back to the one-dimensional model. We have this diode with the anode, P plus anode on the left, the intrinsic region in the middle, and the N plus cathode, that is the substrate on the right. The first difference with respect to a conventional low-power uh, diode is the presence of this low-doped region that will uh, change the static IV curve that we studied and we are, uh, we are used to see. First of all, the structure exhibits few junctions, J1 and J2. J1 is the junction we all studied, we, everybody knows. It is a PN junction. But it's interesting to note that also the step change between uh, a low doped N region and N region and N, N plus region is actually a junction between two semiconductor layers with different doping. This is uh, a not blocking junction, cannot block the current. You cannot get a reverse voltage on an N, N plus junction, but there will be a voltage drop on it. 
the, the basic effect is always the same. The high carrying concentration of electrons in the N plus region, you can imagine that they flow in the low doped region ND, creating a small depleted region. A small depleted region uh, minus mm, carriers, you know, fixed carriers here, and mobile uh, positive carriers on the other side, or vice versa. And in the end, you integrate the electric field and get a built-in voltage. And this is a junction. If the current concentration on both sides of the junction change, the voltage drop on the junction must change. The working principle of the diode is that holes are injected from the P plus anode into the low doped region. These holes are usually named minority carriers since they are holes injected in, in an N doped region where the majority carriers are electrons. However, since this doping here is quite low, it can easily happen that the density of holes injected from the P plus anode can overcome the majority carrier concentration due to the doping. This carrier concentration will be ND since at ambient temperature we assume that all the uh, all, all the donors' atoms are ionized and donate one free electron. In this case, we say that uh, this region is in the high injection regime and uh, the behavior of the region will change, will, will change, will significantly change. In this plot, we see the P plus region, the N plus region, and the intrinsic layer. Uh, the dash dot line reports the doping concentration. And uh, we have red and blue solid lines report the holes minority carriers distribution in the low dope and D layer for a diffusion length that is much larger than the thickness of this uh, region. There are two different modes of operation. Case A, the blue line, we are in low injection. The carriers uh, have a concentration that is lower than the doping. This is what we studied for the diode, for the BJT, during the basic courses on analog or digital electronics. Case B, when, or the red curve, is the high injection. The injected carriers are, have a concentration that is higher than the doping ND, the red curve. Now we know that in this region we have uh, an electric, electric charge balance that says that the sum of positive carriers must be equal to the sum of negative carriers. And the positive carriers <coughs> are the fixed positive charge due to the doping atoms plus the holes. And this must be equal to the negative charge. In low injection, the injected holes, P, are much smaller than ND. Please note that it is not clear here, but these uh, doping uh, plots are always in log scale. This is 10 to 18, 10 to 17, this is 10 to 14. There is 1,000 difference between this point and this point. This means that this line is probably another 1,000 Ampli 1,000 times smaller than the doping. And so we can clearly see that P is much smaller than ND. We can neglect P here, and then we say that in low injection, the electrons are only the electrons due to the 
donors to ionized elements. In the high injection, on the other, other hand, P, the injected holes, it overcome the doping. We have P higher than ND. We can then neglect ND and say that N is more or less equal to P. That is, that the ND are both higher than ND. In high injection, the hole concentration and the electron concentration will be equal. From where do we take all the electrons? The donors can give us ND. And the remaining? The remaining are simply coming from the N plus region. They are injected from this other region. We have holes injected from ER and electrons injected from ER. Please note that hole is injection from ER is a positive current from the anode to the cathode. Electrons injected from the cathode in this direction are always a current in the same direction. This is another current component. The current is made by holes and electrons. When we are in a low injection regime, there is no voltage drop on J2. And uh, the voltage on the diode is just the voltage on the J1 junction. The characteristic that we measure is the ideal characteristic of the diode. That is J, the, car the current density is proportional to J0, the saturation current, multiplied by the exponential of the voltage, applied voltage divided by the thermal voltage, minus one. In the high injection regime, on the other hand, P0, that is the current concentration of holes here, is much larger than ND. We can uh, write the expression for P0 as uh, P0 is equal to the steady state uh, equilibrium value of the holes in the AP layer, multiplied by the exponential of Vj divided by T. Vj once. But P0, PO here, this is a capital O or zero, let's say P0, uh, is uh, equal to the square of the intrinsic carrier concentration divided by the doping. As an example, let us assume that V is equal to the V, uh, the drop voltage drop on J1, it, it is 0.6 volts and D is 10 to 14 atoms per cube centimeter. The square of the intrinsic current concentration, concentration is more or less 2 by multiplied 10 to the power of 20. We get from equation 17 that the current concentration P at point 0 is 5 multiplied 10 to, to, to the power of 16 that is much larger than 10 to 14. Then we are in a high injection. And if the diffusion length of the holes is larger than the thickness of the intrinsic layer, this means that the also the holes at the end of the diffused layer will be more or less equal to uh, N that will be equal to N in W point, that will be larger than ND. The point is, if the diffusion length is much larger than WD, this carrier concentration is more, more or less constant here. And if P in point zero is higher than ND, the same will happen here at point W. The fact that uh, the current concentration, the electron concentration in the point WD is larger than the doping concentration means that uh, 
there must be a voltage drop on J2 junction that increases the electron concentration there. The junction must be forward biased in order, slightly forward biased in order to inject those carriers that we need to increase the, the holes, electron concentration above the doping level. This means that now the overall diet voltage is no more VJ1, but will be the sum of VJ1 or VJ1 plus VJ2. Let's try to evaluate the elect, uh, current voltage characteristic relationship in this case. We do assume that uh, the diffusion length of the holes and of electrons is much larger than WD. This means that we can approximate the holes distribution more or less as a flat distribution for the entire thickness of the AP layer, WD. And we will have more or less the holes concentration and uh, in, in WD point is more or less equal to electron concentration in WD point and both are higher than ND. From equation 17 that we have seen here, applied to the abscissa WD, we have that the electron concentration in WD will be proportional to ND multiplied by the exponential of VJ2 divided V phi, the thermal voltage. This means that we need the voltage drop VJ2 across the second junction in order to increase the electron concentration here above the equilibrium level. There will be a voltage drop here that takes electrons from here and injects them here. We can uh, relate the current density of the diode, J of the diode, to the carrier density P0 and N in WD point. We can actually write that uh, the current is proportional to the charge stored into the AP layer QP. It's proportional to this charge divided by the lifetime. We are neglecting the uh, leakage current through the junction. We are just considering the recombination current into the AP layer. And the idea is this one. We, have, we are in the condition in which the current concentration is more or less flat, the AP layer is full of electrons and holes, and every time one electron recombines with one hole, we need an electron com coming from the cathode, and one electron coming from the anode, and one hole coming from the anode, from the anode to bring the situation in the steady state condition as before. Every time, one hole and one electron recombine, there is some current flowing through the diode. How fast these carriers recombine? They, they do recombine faster if they have very low lifetime. Hence, the current is proportional to the charge, QP, divided by the lifetime. Note that this is uh, this has the dimensions of uh, charge, and this is the dimension of uh, time. This means that this is coulomb over second, and this is ampere, uh, ampere density. And uh, this uh, this equation holds as is physically sound. We can substitute the charge as the total charge in the AP layer, Q, P0, multiply double good D. And this will be JP0, a current density, multiplied by the, by the exponential VJ1 divided VT. But this is also equal to QN in double good D, multiplied double good D divided tau, that is JN0, multiplied by the exponential of VJ2 divided by T. 
We can divide both equations by jp0 and jn0, obtaining these two exponential. We can uh, apply the log to both equations, obtaining the natural logarithm of j minus ln jp0 is equal to vj1 divided vt, and the same for jn0 as a function on vj2. And here we want to calculate which is the variation of the voltage on J1 and J2 if the current is varied as a step variation. We pass to the differential notation. For a variation delta J of the current, you get that the, you have a variation of the log of J is proportional to delta Vj1 divided Vt, and the variation of delta log of, of J is proportional to delta Vj2 divided Vt. You can sum both of them and get that the variation of Vj1 plus Vj2 divided by T, that is uh, the variation of the pin, is proportional to twice the, log, the variation of the log of J. This can be written in the exponential form, saying that the current is proportional to J0, that will be uh, the equivalent saturation current, if in, even in this case both the, the two junctions are involved in this saturation current, multiplied by the exponential or of the voltage on the diode divided twice the thermal voltage. In the plane of where the x-axis is the voltage and on the y-axis we have the log of the, the current, we can then say that for very low voltages we are in the low injection regime and uh, um, the slope of the characteristics proportional to V divided Vt. Let's say it's proportional to 1 divided Vt. When we enter in the high injection regime, not for very high voltages, this can happen for 0 0.5, 0 0.6 volts, because the doping is very small, the derivative decreases and we have a, a, the slope is proportional to 1 divided twice Vt. Please note that this is a detrimental effect. If we were uh, in this condition with this current, we would have this voltage drop. In real conditions, due to the high injection regime, the voltage drop increases for the same current, and we have higher voltage drop. This means increased power dissipation, increased onset voltage drop. This point of change in the slope uh, depends on the device, depends on the temperature through the thermal voltage term, depends on the doping, since the lower is the doping, the, the earlier happens the high injection regime. And here it is written, we can get uh, the high injection regime for very low on state voltage drop, like 0 0.6, 0 0.5. We know that for a conventional diode, the significant current is obtained for 0.7 volts on the diode. We are just saying here that the conventional, typical power diode is always in the, in the high injection regime when it works to, for real currents. Uh, our analysis is very simplified but we need to understand the basics. We don't want to enter into the details. And it is based on the assumption of a constant current distribution in the low doped region. And this can be seen with the numerical simulator. In this case, a one-dimensional numerical simulator using a PC1D numerical simulator has been done. These are the plots that present the results of the simulation for a typical power diode. 
the parameters or the diode are this one. We have uh, a P plus diffusion anode that, is a, that has a Ga Gaussian distribution. The peak volt, uh, current concentration is 10 to 19, and the thickness is 10 micron. The, the junction is here. The other junction is, uh, is at 60 micron, leaving 50 microns for the AP layer. The N plus is the substrate, is, it, it, this is not diffused, this is the part of the chip, and its doping is 10 to 19. The lifetime is one microsecond. This is the doping in log scale, P doping and doping. What we see in the bottom plot is the carrier distribution for two different cases. 0.45 voltage applied to the device and 0.7 volts. The first case is low injection. We have the solid lines for the low injection. As you can see, in the P region, the holes follow the doping. In the N region, the electrons follow the doping, and the holes are much smaller, 10 times, 20 times smaller than the doping concentration. In the N plus region, the electrons follow the doping, and the holes are negligible, much lower than 10 to 12. In the high injection regime, the applied voltage is 0.7 volts, we have uh, the situation provided by the dashed lines. In the N plus and P plus regions, the situation does not change. We only see what starts to be significant, a leakage of holes in the N plus, in, P, in the P plus region, excuse me, a, a leakage of electrons in the P plus region. This is the injection uh, of the electrons here, and also an injection of uh, holes in the N plus region here. But what is important to see is that the current concentration here, N and P, are almost identical, and are much larger than ND. It's about 10 to 16 with respect to 10 to 14. Uh, note how much this uh, current concentration is flat here. The lifetime is quite long, one microsecond, but not uh, unrealistic. This is a realistic way. We were able to calculate the IV characteristic of the diode in the low injection and in the high injection regime. We are completely neglecting, the, at this point, the voltage drop on the middle layer. We are seeing that the voltage drop on the diode is just a junction, but the thick load of region is not considered. This is not possible, this effect is not possible to be neglected when the current starts to be significant. There will be a voltage drop on the low dope region. And this is possibly even the biggest part of the voltage drop. The important point, point to understand is that we will have the, in a, a high concentration of both electrons and holes in the low dope region that will strongly reduce the resistivity of the intrinsic layer. This is a, a, a good improvement. If we were in the homic case without the carrier in, carriers injected from, from the anode and the cathode, the voltage drop would be much larger. Assume, we can assume that the Carrier concentration in the low doped region are P of X is equal to N of X, and we call this NA, and that will be constant, we'll, this will be the um, M bipolar concentration. In this case, as you remember, carriers move through semiconductors or by drift by the electric field, by the force of the electric field or by diffusion. 
Diffusion depends on the derivative of the carrier concentration. But since this uh, carrier concentration is flat, the derivative is zero. There will be no diffusion current in this condition, just the drift current, that is the ohmic component, what we are interested in. The total diode current in the epilayer region will then be J, will be proportional to Q, mu n plus mu p, the multiplied Na multiplied by E, the electric field. We can also write mu A, that is the m bipolar mobility, a, a physical constant, multiplied by the current concentration. The mobility we studied is not constant and depends on the carrier concentration. And the same happens for the m bipolar mobility. This value is not constant. For very high current concentration, the mobility tends to decrease because we can say the carriers are so concentrated, there are so many carriers that they collide each other, reducing the mobility. We can think in this way. An empirical relation that uh, relates the mobility on the doping concentration on the carrier concentration in uh, low injection is this one. The mobility is proportional to the value in the low carrier concentration condition, low doping condition divided 1 plus nd divided n2. With n2 is, uh, is, uh, can be 10 to 70, more or less. The plot of this uh, relation is this one. Below n2, this is a log scale, this is a log scale, below n2, this, uh, this nd divided n2 is, non, is uh, very small, and mu is equal mu zero. When we are above n2, one is negligible with respect to uh, and, and divided n2, and we have a mobility that decreases with the, the doping, with nd. The same can be written for the high injection case. The only difference is that we have to substitute nd with n, and N2 will be more or less the same value. Hence, the uh, and bipolar mobility will be mu A0 divided 1 plus Na divided N2. Now we can, uh, from equation 19, obtain the current that will be Q multiplied the and bipolar mobility, the and bipolar current concentration multiplied by E, and we can. Uh, Assume that the, the electric field is constant throughout the AP layer, and so we, it can be written as uh, the voltage on the depleted region, on the, on, the, on the AP layer, divided WD. We can then obtain VD as a function on J, WD, Q, mu A, and A, and also substitute to mu A, the and bipolar mobility, the relation that we have seen equation 20. If we substitute equation 20 in 21, uh, we get equation 21. If the n bipolar concentration is much larger than n2, this is a limit case, but this is what we are trying to calculate now, this term is negligible, and we get Double N A and N A simplify each other, and we get the double V double V D is proportional to J multiply this term, and this term has the dimensions of a resistance. That is the resistance of the epilayer region when it is filled with holes and electrons we will say that it is conductivity modulated. Its resistance will be much lower than the ohmic case. 
Rm will be proportional to the thickness, will be inversely proportional to the area, to Q, to and bipolar mobility in steady state, multiplied by n shu, that is 10 to 17, more or less. This is much smaller than the ohmic resistance. The ohmic resistance will be this value. Instead of mu a zero, I will have mu zero, um, but this is not a real difference. Instead of n shu, I will, be, will have n d. This is 10 to 17, this is 10 to 14, more or less. This one is 1,000 times smaller than this. This effect is uh, the conductivity mod modulation. This is due to the high injection regime. And uh, finally, IV curve of a PIN diode in the simplifying approximation that we have done will be divided into three regions. The ideal diode region for very low voltage is 0 0.4, 0 0.5 volts. For, uh, point two, from 0.4 to 0.7, no more than that. We are in the high injection regions with the low voltage drop on the, modulate, on the AP layer region. The slope decreases. Above this point, for very high currents, we enter in the open region. The diode becomes more or less like a resistor, and this voltage drop here will be Rn multiplied J. In the log scale, the resistive plot will be a logarithmic plot. The strange thing is this one. But we have this third region. We usually work here with the resistive voltage drop on the diode. As we do expect, there will be a trade-off between the on-state on voltage drop and the breakdown voltage. We say that the RM value is much smaller than the ohmic value. The conductivity modulated AP region is much lower than the ohmic value. But uh, even though the, the, this resistance constitutes a significant increase of the total diode voltage drop, that will be VPIN will be equal to VJ1 plus VJ2 plus RM multiplied by J. Now we can define, we, we remember that doping and thickness of the low doped re AP layer region are defined according to the breakdown voltage. And this means that we can express the Rm, the conductivity modulated uh, resistance, as a function of breakdown voltage. We come back to equation 24 for Rm. Uh, we can imagine a triangular field profile up to the breakdown, limit case of the known punch through the sign. We studied this one. In this case, the breakdown voltage will be uh, proportion will be equal to the critical electric field multiplied by the thickness of the blader divided by 2. That will be 10 to 5. This is two, twice 10 to 5. This is 10 to 5 multiplied double WD. Uh, let's say that N2 is more or less 10 to 17. The N bipolar mobility is 2000. The dimensions here are not, the dimensions are not written, would have been better to write the dimensions down. However, believe me, they, they do, comb they, do, they, do they, 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 they are coherent. These are centimeter, these are centimeter, and so on. Uh, in the end, you get the modu conductivity modulated resistance that is uh, this value that is proportional to the breakdown voltage. and it depends on the area. You can always reduce the resistance increasing the area of the ship. But for a given year, it increases, linearly increases with the breakdown voltage. For example, if the breakdown voltage is 1,000 volts, assuming 0.1 centimeter square for the, the chip area, diode area, the RM resistance is more or less 3 millivolts. 
With the current of 100 amps, the voltage drop RMI will be 0.3 volts. And the overall diode voltage will be over 1.1 volt. A power diode will have a voltage drop that is not 0.7, not 0.8, can be 1 volt, 2 volts, even more than 2. But 1 volt is very small, however, but if we think of the power dissipation in the on state, 1 volt multiplied 100 amp is 100 watts <coughs> dissipated on a very small diode. We understand which is the importance of this design. If this voltage would have been 0.7, we were saving 30 watts of power dissipation. It's not only heating, it's only efficient. It's also efficiency. Uh, obviously, for the case of uh, punch, full punch through the sign, the thickness of the, this region will be, would be half and the resistance would be reduced. Uh, from this sentence, uh, you understand that it's always good to have the punch through the sign. Uh, there is something that is not said, that here is not clear. In order to reach the high value, this uh, conductivity modulation value, you need a very high current. If the doping uh, is uh, very small, it will be more difficult to reach this value. It means that the doping, uh, in this equation you don't see the doping, but is, it is present. It's always better to have higher doping in the, in the, in the AP layer. It, this will reduce the, the resistance. 